Never done this one. I had to do it. Welcome in, work shoot show audience. Welcome in, for our rising grind audience. 1033 the boat audience. We got the boat wrestler, commentator, podcaster in the building. Brian Waters, acknowledge him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The honorary realmer <laughs> and the host of the wrestling realm. Brian H. Waters, how you doing, my brother? We've never Man. done Roman Steam, and I figured I- it's more <laughs> apropos than ever to do the head of the table, the tribal chief. Absolutely. I was pumped up, man. I mean, you know, I knew he was about to play the music. So I was like, all right, uh, maybe I might know the words this time. <laughs> it must so I <laughs> No, I had to switch it up on us. <laughs> yeah, you did. And that's uh that's one of the songs I play to get ready for, whether I'm in the gym or if I'm getting ready to pod. Uh, I am a fan of that theme music. Roman is my guy. I was thinking about this the other day. This dude might creep up. He might creep up into my top five before See? it's all said okay. and done. We're going to have that conversation today because I want to talk about Roman Reigns' greatness, but we got we to gotta build to that. I'm glad you said it because that reminded me we're going to do this. For those listening for on the Workshoot Show, remember Pete and I will be doing our deep review where we do our uh, we give our scores of Elimination Chamber. That'll be coming out later this week. But I had to sit down with my brother Brian Waters to see what his thoughts were of Elimination Chamber in the state of wrestling as a whole. And this will also be on the radio on 103.3 The Goat. Uh, Brian, I'm telling you, you got to laugh yet high, brother. They always ask. They say, uh, a pay-per-view has happened. You better bring him back. And I'm like, all right, all right. I got y'all. Don't worry. Because they know you give the best information and they love our conversation. So without further ado, let's start off with what were your overall thoughts of Elimination Chamber? A lot of people. So I didn't catch... Be- the beginning, I didn't catch the NXT Black and Gold era when it was airing. I went rewatch it as be- I got ready to do this, you know, like 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 we discussed, I did a lot of research before I said, okay, let me step into the world of wrestling podcasting. And mm-hmm. to me, more than any other show, this is the one where Triple H was like, okay, I'm doing my style. It's over with. I'm in charge. If, if Vince is going to come back or not, I'm showing the bosses why I need to be the man in charge. And he made it like an NXT TakeOver event, and it felt incredible. I think this was the best Triple H pay-per-view possibly. How did you feel about the chamber? Wow. See, every time, this is what I always say. I love coming on this show, man, because it's always something that I take away. I know you, you know, and I appreciate your audience for, you know, welcoming me in every time, that Southern hospitality. Got you. I take a lot in from you too you know that's why i can't wait i can't wait till we can get you on the wrestling realm because it's gonna happen very soon yes uh, sir shout out to the real dwayne allen who's the programming manager for the wrestling uh realms shout out to the guy. podcast oh and we got to shout out brother hugh before oh, you know, yeah. the coolest guy in the room the coolest guy in the room shout out to brother hugh shout out to brother brandon the belt the real belt king oh yeah and, i uh, forgot yeah that's <laughs> yes sir yeah, yeah he got his own belt show coming up so i'm excited for Lit. that the thing about so a lot of things you said there, right? Triple H's first time. And I, it, it made me think. I'm thinking SummerSlam. I'm thinking Clash at the Cats. So I'm thinking Extreme Rules. I'm thinking Royal Rumble, Survivor Series. And those are good shows, but when you really think about it, this did have an NXT TakeOver mm-hmm. feel. Here's the reasons. A lot of reasons, right? It wasn't too many matches on the card. All yep. the matches got time. And Montreal, picking the city and... and you know, he talked about in the post presser how Pat Patterson would have been so excited and would have shed tears. Yep. Just watching this. Um, overall, I thought the show was great. Oh, every match delivered the way I thought it should. I went to Jimmy Seafood down here in Baltimore. Um, people always hear about them, you know, that's the place that's where everybody the spot. it's the spot. And um, I was watching it with one of the two of the bloodlines. I saw two that of the bloodline. Shout so- out to Lance on Hawaii, uh, and the head shrinker Sam Moo. This, how did uh, they Lance. feel? How, how did how did Lance and, and Samu feel? They were they the whole time were they like, oh, they, come on, man, the family winning this. Like, yeah, know, exactly. nobody... it was throwing the <laughs> ones up. You yeah, know? And, and it was fun seeing fans acknowledge them. So, side note, me and Lance are boys. So I, I, yep. Yeah, because I met, are you are you a man? I meant to ask you this, not to cut you off. Mm-hmm. Are no, you a manager ahead. for Jabuji? And for those that don't know, <laughs> independent. Uh, if I said his name wrong, I, I truly Jay apologize. Jay Bougie, yeah, Bougie. Bougie. He is a, a independent wrestler who has all the talent in the world. And my man Brian H. Waters is this guy. Are you a manager? <laughs> yeah. Um. You know that that's my guy, man. Okay. That's my guy. We, okay. We, you know, 
We're going to get Jay Bougie on the show. Yes, sir. We're gonna, we're, we're yes, get, sir. But what I want to do, I want to see them book him down there. Because okay. there's some there's some good wrestling down in uh, Louisiana. Yes, we there know is. About that. And shout whatever to, he does, you already know. We, we're going to yeah. promote that, the hell out of it. Yeah, shout out to the, um, you know, my former. I used to do social media manager for Amber Rodriguez. She retired, but my one and only time of going to a show outside of New Orleans, I can't think of the name of the city. Lake Charles? Uh, no, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say all the big ones. Shreveport? Mm-hmm. No. B- Baton Rouge? No, it was a Morgan small city. city. Homer? No. Like Thibodeau? Charmalee, something. Oh, Sharma. Sh- uh, sh- no, sh- uh, uh, hold on. Chalmette? Sh- sh- yeah, that one. Chalmette. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that, that one. <laughs> <laughs> said, no. Yeah, I remember we. it was it was Uber, Uber drivable. So we yeah, Uber from New Uber. Orleans, huh? Yeah, yep. and then Amber and I rode with me and my former manager, shout out to Marin. We rode with her back to New Orleans and got some food. It was the first time Marin had ever been to a show. And it's always fun. If you get a chance, take somebody who's not into wrestling to a wrestler show, whether it's WWE or independent. Because yep. you hear things, you see things that you never would hear, right? My girlfriend, when we went to, I don't know if I remember if I told you about this, we went to AEW's, the Christmas one, where Kenny mm-hmm. um, uh, got the first win in the trios matches. I think this was yeah. the, ladders, uh, the ladders one. Bro, her face, like, before she was like, I'm glad you enjoy this. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it, because some of the pay-per-views, she enjoyed watching Loki. She watched WrestleMania, and she watched whatever one. Uh, the oh, big ones. Yeah, uh, the Saudi one, uh, Crown Jewel, because she wanted to see Roman Reigns beat up Logan Paul, because she can't stand Logan Paul. But then okay. she watched this, and she was like, you know what? Seeing it live, it's act- you see how athletic these people are. And, and she was like, I don't like th- that people call it fake now. I was like, you see, Thank you. it's see- like it's real stuff. They're athletes. And sh- she got into it from that. You're absolutely right. A live show changes people's perspectives. Yeah, man. And, you know, so that's the thing. Um, You know, Marin was sitting up there. She's like, are those style highs? It's like, no, it's boots and knee pads. <laughs> yeah. And I looked again. I said, wow, I never thought that. And I've been watching her <laughs> at that time, 34 <laughs> years. But, um, yeah, so that was the time, you know, I was doing her social media manager. And so, yeah, we definitely want to get Jay Bougie down there. But, yeah, um, I'm not not his manager, but, you know, I'm his, um, I would say, you know, one of his wise men. Yeah, um, his confidant. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah, you know, but. um, Love yeah, to but, see it. Yeah, him and Lance had a match months ago, and like I said, you know, you, you helped him. You helped him get that W, I, man. I, I, I actually, I wasn't there. I wasn't. Wait, wait, I had, that's I had not the one. Engagement. No, well, it, th- was, it was. What am match, I thinking of? It was the, the most recent one. match in, okay. Bron- in the Bronx. It was four gotcha. match in the Bronx, November third. Uh, I was a special enforcer, and um, Lance was in that one, huh? No, uh, Lance oh, he- was, this is so he called Lance out afterwards. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, I knew there was something involving Lance there. Yeah, he called Lance out afterwards. You know, and Bougie had an incredible twenty twenty. Two, so 2023 is gonna be. He was in. Happen. He was in PW. Uh, he was in the PWR. Huh? The PWR. Yes, sir. Love yep. to see it. Love to see Jay uh, Bougie do that. Had, had a match for AEW Dark. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you know, um, like I said, we, I, I'm, I'm gonna talk to him. Matter of fact, we, you let me know. Um, I'll get him on the show. He, All right, yeah, we're gonna, we're, to we're gonna talk about that off air for sure. Yeah. So, um, so you watching it with the bloodline? Yeah, watching it with Lance, and you know, me and Lance, we catching up. You know, it's mm-hmm. first time we seeing each other in person. You know, all the bygones be gygones, you know. Him, yes, Bougie, sir, yeah. Bougie got the win. So, uh, you know, he made up for Lance cheating me in NBA 2K mm-hmm. back in 2012. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it was real cool to sit back and just be able to enjoy the um, enjoy that. And just you see, like, you know, he's, of course, he talking about, you know, him, Bougie. And, we're going to put it out there. Him, Bougie, and Roman, will, you know, play Call of Duty sometimes. Yeah. And but. so I was like, mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, Bougie got on with him. I said, you know, so. Uh, and, and it's funny because like years ago, I remember talking to him about, you know, he would say, always say he would play, he said, I played Call of Duty or play online with the twins, talking about mm-hmm. the Usos. The Usos, yeah. So, you know, that family's really tight, you know, but it was cool to see the reactions, you know, and it's one of those shows I had to go back at home and watch because you hear it in the restaurant, yep. you hear the crowd, but I, I'm a, you know, we, we broadcast marks because yep. that's what we do. So we appreciate the craft. Ex- so I, I, bro, I stopped, I stopped real, uh, real talk. I, mm-hmm. I do when my homies like to get together for games and they, they call me antisocial, but I'm like, bro, y'all don't understand. It's my job. So mm-hmm. like, I really like to listen in zone in. I, my girlfriend's like, why you don't watch on the big screen? Because I don't even want to be around my girlfriend and my dog. Like I go okay. in my studio and just put it on my, uh, my, I have my computer and my TV in case I'm doing dual thing. But to your point, I like to hear what the commentators are saying. I like to hear what yep. the wrestlers saying. Cause when you, when you watch it at like a sports bar or something, you miss out on the little things. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I, that's true. You know, I love being interactive. You know what I mean? I love being amongst the people. To see oh, yeah, because you get a different vibe for sure. You get a different vibe. 
Royal Rumble, I was there. So being in the Royal, at the Royal Rumble, being on the floor doing some parts, hearing the crowd, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that was the cool part. So, you know, it was, it was amazing to be at Jimmy's to see that, especially when Montez Ford was doing, Montez was made a star that night. And I know oh, we're we'll going to we'll get to that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So overall, I thought it was a great show. It was the perfect way. This is the perfect road to WrestleMania. So far. I agree. You know what I mean? I know people may, may not like the way the it final ended. match ended. We'll yeah. get to that. But overall, this is, this is the type of road to WrestleMania that takes me back to 1999, which was one of my favorite roads, which was leading us to Austin Rock. You had Mankind and, uh, and The Rock going at it. You had Austin Fury with McMahon. So, yeah, man. I'm ready and, I, and speaking of Mankind, I like I like y'all's comparison. I gave y'all credit because I had to use it on the on the oh, show of, of Mick Foley. I was like, man, that was one of the bet. Like, like you said, how you get things from me, I get things from you. That mm-hmm. Mick Foley take was incredible that y'all had on the pot. I believe it was Dwayne that, that, that started. Well, so, the, the, so I started. The OK, part, you did. And then Dwayne uh, took it a step further, especially when he said, after this match, Sami Zayn would be made into a made a man. Yep, a and he, man. he is. That's mm-hmm. a fact. So, well, you look at even just look at the similarities, right? If you look at Sami Zayn, so I met him last year at WrestleMania. Um, shout out to Krista B of those wrestling girls. The, she woke me. I always make the joke that she woke me up like four o'clock, five o'clock <laughs> in the morning, texting me like, hey, "Yo, bro." But what it was, so we went out to Wally Mania the night before, right? Hey, hard. Every, no, everybody was out there, so I'm thinking, all right, I'm about to go back and run. She's like, "Yo." Let's all get up and go chicken. So me, her, her co-host, Queen PR, we went, met up with Black Wrestling Podcast. We all eating chicken. Then we go back. Everybody go back to their rooms, like 3 o'clock. I'm like, all right, cool. Child went to bed, woke up, like 6.30. Like, and so I'm like, you know, I know I got to get the work around mm-hmm. 8 or 9 to get set up because we get got everything ready. Stuff. Yeah. Well, she texts me, bro, what you doing? I'm like, um, you know, kind of getting dressed. I'm Just waking here. up, yeah. Get some food or whatever. Yo, I'm at the the little breakfast media session. Can you c- come through? Like, yo, I'm not. I'm... All right. So <laughs> I had my gear, you know, and so she was interviewing. She interviewed Sami Zayn, Becky Lynch, Jimmy Hart. Uh, eventually, she interviewed Naomi. I wasn't there for that one, but I did get a drop from Sami Zayn and Dope. um Jimmy Hart. But what you saw from Sami was. You could see, like, and this is my dream. He's going to go against Johnny Knoxville. Mm. But you saw a guy who can do it all. He's versatile. And you look at, like, Mick Foley. Sammy could be the comedy guy. Yep. But he can also be the everyday man, as Kaz said on The Masked Man this week, as the guy who you look at as, like, I can relate to him. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, he takes his shirt off. He doesn't have, like, the greatest body. He's not a chiseled body. We saw that. You know, but he got the hair and it's all yeah. scraggly. You know, got so, a little loose strands here and there like Mick Foley. Yeah, no. Yeah, and, and to yeah. your point, at WrestleMania, when I saw Johnny Knox, I was like, oh, they made this guy a comedy guy. But at that moment, because see, like I said, I didn't watch Black and Gold. But at that mm-hmm. moment after the match, I was like, oh, wait, this guy is incredible. And yep. I was bought in from that point on. And then as I'm rewatching the old NXTs, I was like, oh, he's special. He mm-hmm. is he is special, and I'm glad. Did you watch his match with Shinsuke Nakamura. Yes, sir. That's the one. That's the, that, and see, speaking on that, that's where I got the idea of this elimination chamber. Really felt like a takeover match. Like that that mm-hmm. pay per view in particular was one of the ones where I was like, okay, I see what Triple H was doing. Yep. So the Haluva kick uh, to me is, I I like it more than the super kick because now I think the Haluva kick can actually take somebody out. Where it's everybody doing the super kick now. The, the, look, I'm trying to tell y'all, if y'all don't pay attention with to this man be saying, he knows his wrestling. I, I did a lot of studying because, I, like I said, if I was going to talk with you, I had to be ready. I had <laughs> to be made, ready to go. Sense, you know what I mean? Um, And then, like, the way Roman sold it, right? Oh, beautiful. And, and, and see, the thing about Roman Reigns is. Let's do, let's, let's go there now. We'll get to the Elimination Chamber. Let's talk Roman. Because the way he sells everything, he bro. Sells, and I was thinking about this on the drive. Voted. He's unstoppable, but he's really not, right? Mm-hmm. Like Brock Lesnar had this look like you can't be him. You you just can't. And 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 the reason it works with Brock one because he left for years and, and when he came MMA, back, yeah. And, and and his his gear looks different, right? Mm-hmm. His presence because now he's legitimate. You know he's a fighter. Before he was like the next big thing. And you 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 go back and look at some of the old matches because he was wearing wrestling regular wrestling gear. He yep. just looked like one of the best wrestlers amongst the group, the group yeah. but he looked like he could be beat 
Like, you wouldn't be surprised if Brock Lesnar got beat by a roll-up, pinned with a roll-up. You know what I mean? Nowadays, like, it doesn't. But, like, I was looking at this clip. Somebody posted. And it reminded me, you know who the first person to pin Roman Reigns? Who? I take it. I, I give you one guess. Okay. Um, I, I know I know Baron Corbin was the most recent one. You're talking about the first all time. The first person when I'm he a, was I, Roman I, Reigns. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess the new uh, dictator of authority over that impact, Santino Morella, just because it's something wild. No, okay, Jay Uso. Wait, it, it see, was eight. Mm, that <laughs> it was like a um, multi man match. I want to say it was like, but it, I know it was the uh, Usos. It was like Dolph Ziggler and somebody else against the Shield, and maybe maybe I don't know if they had partners or not, but somebody reminded me on Twitter, Jay Uso was the first person because if you remember. Now, let's go a little bit. Let me go behind the scenes a little bit. Go ahead. This there is why we got you. Kevin Eck, who used to write for the Baltimore Sun. He's a local guy. He worked at WWE, dare say, mid early 2010s, right? Okay. He was up there. The beginning the of the Shield era. Yeah. The beginning of the Shield era. He told me when uh, he, had, he got laid off when they did some budget cuts in 2014, 2015. Um, we were sitting at the Tory Smith game. Tory Smith uh, does a basketball game charity basketball game so this is 2016 we was talking he said you know he said man i had this idea pitched where the usos and roman reigns would be a faction it'd be like the mm. Simone dynasty he said vince didn't want to hear it he said you know and he said roman showed me pictures of them when they were younger i the bet usos he feels so vindicated me. now <laughs> like man. holy crap but they was trying to do something like this years ago go, yeah and do you remember the first time they really cut like even when they was teaming, like if you go back in like 2015 when it was like the Usos versus um, Roman and Seth, right, mm -hmm. for the tag titles, they would kind of make note of it, but they wouldn't go deep into it. But it was like, yeah, we're not stupid. Everybody yeah, knows their family. Yep. Like if, if you know, so then later on, when we finally did get them together, um, it was brief, but it was kind of like. You know, they wasn't a bloodline yet. It was when Roman won the championship in Philly mm -hmm. and the Usos came out there to celebrate because then Roman finally got the crowd response because he they won, put the yeah. belt on the most hated person, which was Sheamus. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, but Jay Uso is the first person and that's the part people want to see. But like I said, Roman doesn't feel unstoppable. He just feels like, okay, yeah, he's dominant. He's, he's the biggest everybody. mafia boss, yeah. But, but it's like, if you really look at him, who has really hit Roman in the mouth? Nobody, mm -hmm. nope. you know, so it's you. It's one of those things where, yeah, he took out the baddest of them all twice. Brock Lesnar, two or three times in this in this reign. So it's like, well, okay, he took Brock out. That's like when you go back, and we said this on the Wrestling Around Now podcast. There's going to be generations. It's going to be Hogan Andre. Yep. There's going to be, or you could say Hogan Savage, Brett and Sean. Yeah, I was thinking Brett and Sean. Rock. Rock. Yep. Cena, Cena Punk, or C Cena Orton? Oh, it's Cena. Cena Orton. Okay. Cena Punk wish. He wish. <laughs> um, but, you know, but Cena Orton, mm -hmm. Roman Brock. Yep, I agree. You, you One, know, 1,000%. And, and people hate it, but Roman Reigns has, this last run made Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar's best rivalry. Yep. So, yeah, but, you know, like I said, this run, is, it's been incredible to watch. You got to put him, you like, honestly, man, no matter if Cody takes it out or... If it's something, because I'm going to say I have a prediction for something at the end, and I'm mm -hmm. going to wait till the, that'll be the last thing I say. And I'm glad you brought up Jay Osu, So just remember that it's, it involves Jay. Mm -hmm. But you got to say that Roman is has entered the Cena, Hogan, uh, Austin uh, stratosphere. And Absolutely. you can argue that in terms of final bosses, I'm not talking about uh, a face. I'm not talking about, you know, greatest entering wrestle. I'm talking about final boss. Like how Triple H had his reign of terror, how uh you know Hogan ran the uh the 80s. To me, as the final boss, the 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 last character in the video game, Roman might be the best of all time, man. Yeah, he might. He like might in terms of you. just like you know which when you're going up against it, and I think the Sami Zayn promo to mm -hmm. Cody really sold this to me of I've, I've seen him take out everyone. I know what he can do. I know how they think. He has the wise men, one of the best people who strategize. You got the Usos, the best tag team. You got Solo, the enforcer, everyone behind him. And him himself is one of the most cerebral people. Like, you don't understand, Cody, this guy's different. And when Sammy said all that, it made me realize, like, we always call him a mafia boss. We always call him Bison, M. Bison mm -hmm. from Street Fighter. <laughs> 
but like mm -hmm. he really is, man. Like him blowing kisses to Sammy's wife and really like all Roman Reigns would have crumbled in that moment when it was when it was uh getting at him. This Roman knew how to embrace the crowd and, and make him all, even more mad. This all I wanted for him back then. I said, mm -hmm. you look at this guy. He's a good looking guy. He shouldn't be saying sassafras. <laughs> God. Suckling succotash. Yeah. I, act like that, that, I just act like that never happened. <laughs> he but, finally but, gets to be himself. But but my ex used to say, oh, my goodness, he's this and he's that. And I would say, OK, so who you like more, the rock or him? Mm -hmm. Him more. And I said, why doesn't this guy embrace who he is? You know, I said, okay, he want to be faithful. I'm glad you said that he, he is that. better. I must say it as the attitude was oh, the thing I grew up with. I might oh. like Roman more than a rock. Oh, 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 I don't know about that. But yeah. I'm just talking about as far as like the ladies, like for sure. You know, so like for him to sit up there, but the storytelling, the storytelling, what he said to her, I'm trying to embrace you. Yep. I was trying to make sure y'all. I wanted y'all to be in my family. He ruined and, this. <laughs> and you see when he pinned him. He didn't gloat. He still nope. looked like he didn't want to have to do it. Yep. Sami Zayn got close to Roman, closer than what we think. Mm hmm. You know, he and that's what Sami was saying. Like, I know them like they were acting. If you listen to one of the interviews Sami did, it was where he was talking about how close they were. Like, mm -hmm. nah, it was the right move because Vince didn't want him to meet Roman. But Triple H and Roman did. And when they finally got it. Roman knew, hey, this guy's special. We go, we can do something real special. And you got to applaud Roman for just people don't ever want to give him credit about how he is not only a great actor, a great seller, a great in ring wrestler, but in terms of storyteller, he's one of the best. Let me ask you something. By chance, you got twin cousins? Uh, no. Uh, okay. So I had like distant, but yeah, I got it very distant, but yeah, I do. So one of the reasons why I relate to this story so much. My favorite cousins are twins. Okay. <laughs> and and, and they're, the, the difference is, like Roman and the Usos, they're, the Usos are younger than Roman. Okay. And so it's always like when they remember when the, Jay Uso was on his quest, they did the docu-series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They talked about how Jay was always like kicked to the curb. The little brother, the little cousin. And they yeah. treated him like the little brother. Yep. Well, I'm older than my twin cousins. Oh, so you, but, you get the Roman stuff. But but I'm still I mean I'm younger but I'm still oh, a Roman. God. And, and my cousin Christopher is the um, the J the Jimmy. Oh the Jimmy he's okay. The Jimmy. But my cousin Christian is the J. He's mm. what you remember when Jay was wilding out at first. That's the yes, part. Sir. We, the storyline goes so back. I mean it's a whole show like the dynamics right? Because now with Jaden got more on the softer side. Remember he was the hothead. Yes he, he was. was the loose cannon. And that's how my cousin Christian is or used to when we was growing up. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and I sit back and I was like, now my cousins ain't going to let me dictate <laughs> <laughs> the way Roman mm -mm, you you do this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like when he mushed him. Yeah. In the face, I was like, oh, you didn't have to do that to him, Roman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, but it's like it's so crazy. But the story is relatable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because the whole story is built on Loyalty. family. Yeah. And and, and, and see, think I think it. the Goodfellas thing that they got, the, the little promo that they're doing for WrestleMania, mm -hmm. the perfect one, because oh, they see, are the know. mafia. Okay, I don't know nothing about the Goodfellas. I never watched oh, it. See, okay, but, so the, oh, you never watched the Goodfellas movie, bro? I, man, there's so many movies. I haven't seen Goodfellas, Godfather, or Scarface. I played Scarface the video game and beat it. I think just picture all the the, the stereotypes you know about mafia. It comes uh, from the Goodfellas, and 100 okay. the bloodline is wow. is that. Yeah, it's perfect. It, see, it, I'm like, just getting to Succession because Succession, uh, everybody said, it's like, it's like the Vince It story. is. It is. One thousand percent. One million percent. But see, OK, I'm glad we covered this the, of, of mm. Roman and how great he is. We'll talk more about this another time, because after we're going to bring you on on the road to WrestleMania, because there's a lot of things I want to discuss, uh, but I don't want to miss things. Let's start off with the yeah. men's chamber. Montez mm -hmm. Ford was the MVP. My goodness. And you notice to the takeover point, Triple H had all his guys in there, people he trusted, who he knew were the best wrestlers. Seth, mm -hmm. a Triple H guy. Johnny Gargano, Triple H guy. Bronson Reed, Triple H guy. Damian Priest, Triple H guy. Montez Ford, Triple H guy. Austin Theory. I thought that was Theory's best match. I thought that was Gargano's best match in terms of the uh, main roster of this new era. That mm -hmm. move he did when Seth... Kicked him, and then he hurt Kenyana. Bronson Reed, boy, I thought somebody broke their neck. 
I was like, oh my goodness, man. Like, and then Montez Ford doing the Spider-Man drop. Bro, Montez was in a uh, monkey bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it, but you know what? About that, man. Like I said Montez Ford all day. Bronson Reed showed me something because before, oh, okay, oh, he showed he could be the monster for sure. He showed he could be a monster, and and I could be entertained by him. So I'm yep. interested to see the follow up on Monday night. I mean, we kind of knew, like we've been watching wrestling long enough. I don't know why I let get myself hyped that Montez will probably win, but you know, we all it makes things. sense for theory though because John Cena is one of the greatest United States champions, and if they gonna fight mm-hmm. at WrestleMania, it makes sense that it's over the belt in thin. Cena exactly. puts him over. That was my thoughts with the with the uh picking of it. But I and, said and, in my heart of hearts, I wanted Montez to win, of course. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then and then Seth Rollins and Logan Paul, because Seth Rollins is a, you know, his biggest issue is that he came in at the same time as Roman. Yeah, man. And because it, Roman looks like a gazillion, a little bit before defender, or a little bit after. If he would have been by yeah. himself, man. Especially this Seth Rollins, and I think he will get the marquee matchup. But somebody said. Oh, it was Nick Bond. Nick Bond of the Ringer said he'll get a marquee matchup at WrestleMania, but it's going to be more along the lines of Papa. I never had a chance to do it. Okay, now yep. we'll build it for you, which is unfortunate, you know, because the year would have been with him and no, he's the he's the yeah, I was um, say with him and Brock, but he's it, the which I'm gonna call it the ma- the Macho Man of the Hogan era to Hogan's Roman ex- exactly, and it's okay. You yeah. know, he's still printing money. You mm-hmm. know, I think for him to be able to have you interested in him. I just so don't want Logan good. Paul to beat him, but I I feel like that's gonna happen, man. I I don't know. Okay, I because, hope not. <laughs> yeah, it, it could go either way, and I know it's, it's so early to tell, but I love the crossover appeal. Yeah, and, I do too. Seth Rollins. I mean, if you the thing is with WrestleMania, it shows how much Triple H. I see. I think the, by you doing it with Logan, it shows how much he trusts Seth Rollins. But it also shows how much the boys trust Logan Paul. True. If he's true. 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 Ring, true. True. Like the Miz. He's been Roman. In the ring. Roman and now Seth Ro- Seth the Rollins. best, yeah, because they talk. Come on, Roman and Seth are like best friends. So facts. Like, All right, I, I can work with him. Yeah, yeah, you know. So this is this is so much fun, and this is Seth was it. probably like Roman. Was it good? And and to your point, <laughs> yeah, like and he was like, yeah, you could work with him. And Seth was like, all right, I got you. And mm-hmm. Montez Ford selling the end boy. I'm gonna tell you, Brian. I, I was I was so like. Please, God, don't let Montez be hurt. Like, I believed it so much. And then when mm-hmm. Logan came out with the door open, I was like, okay, it no, was you're... for the thing. But man, Montez, from his selling to his to his stunts, uh, to his, I mean, not stunts, his spots, to what he was doing. Mm-hmm. I know people say they don't want him to split up the street profits, but boy, am I ready for the Austin Theory Montez uh rivalry to happen for after WrestleMania for Montez to get the United States Championship at SummerSlam. That I think it was my boy Corey or my boy Zaire said, let it happen during the draft. Ooh, let him during the yes. draft. You don't have to break them. That up. way there's no beef. Yeah. yeah you I like don't need that. to beef with them. You know what I mean? They could be like the new day where they're always friends, but they can go their separate ways. He's gonna have to at one point, in my opinion, one day he's soon, whether it's now or later. Him and Bianca are going to both be a cup, a power couple with championship titles. Yep. Just for the simple fact, walking red carpets. Yep. Because Facts. right now, if you look at Bianca as the bigger star, without a doubt, but if if you don't know wrestling, say your ladies watch it, and she'll say, oh, that's the, oh, she's a champion, so what is he? You know what I mean? That's I such a know. beautiful point because my they just went on, I don't know if you know. Terry uh, Shepard. Uh, see, no, I wasn't even talking about the Sherry Shepard, but okay. it was my girlfriend. But I saw that. No, you're absolutely right. My girlfriend watches Bravo, and it was with uh, mm. Andy Cohen, and she was watching. Uh, I think that's his name, Andy, with the the guy who does New Year's Eve with uh, Anderson Cooper. I think that's his name. Uh, whoever the Bravo interviewer is, my girlfriend was watching his show, um, and basically she was like, "Yo, that Montez Four guy, he's a star." I was like, "Why don't mm. I ever see him wrestling?" When you watch. And uh, I was like, oh, it is Andy Cohen. And I was like, it's coming. His time is coming. He's part of a, 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 a tag team. She was like, I really like that guy. So for her to not know wrestling, to your point of seeing the interview, she was all in on Bianca and Montez. And for mm. when because Bianca was like, I put his all on. And my girlfriend was like, I know that's right. Like, I wouldn't yeah. let nobody else. And But it just talks about how they're relatable. And I showed my girlfriend that Bianca made Montez's gear for the Elimination Chamber, which looked dope. It just... The, the story me, writes itself. Last year, he got, uh, well, two years ago at this point, wow. Um, before the Survivor Series 20, uh, 2021, uh, we had him for the Ringers, Mac Mania at the time. We had the Street Profits on the show, and he said, man, I got my personal seamstress. 
Mm -hmm. I got so much clothes I haven't even worn yet because she makes his clothes and she's like, oh, let me try this. Oh, let me try that. And she's even said like, she can't not stay busy. I talked to her off like, you know, offline and she was saying she made her own wedding dress. I'm like, I said, so I said, you wasn't stressed out. She was like, (laughs) you know, it's more like therapy. Yeah. It helps her relax. That's awesome. (laughs) I love that's a that's a great nugget. Thank you for that, Brian. Because like I love Bianca Belair so much. Like it, mm-hmm. it's amazing to see a black queen dominate the way that she is. She's the John Cena of the women's division, man. Nice. Like it is perfect, and I'm just ready. It's time. I wish Rhea Ripley would have chose her, but Oscar will give her a good match. But I'm just ready for I call it Edge or Randy Orton, whichever one you want to put Rhea as versus Hasina. Mm. I think that's the inevitable. Yeah. It'll collide. I, I just think right now she gets another victory. I know this is very soon, but you know, as dominant of a performance Oscar had, which I'm glad they didn't do it. Where the she women's like elimination Shana. chamber was del- was incredible as well. Exactly, got a lot, got gave them an opportunity to shine. Mm-hmm. And I think what happens for uh, Bianca is she gets her WrestleMania 22 moment, like uh, John or oh, 23, whichever one you want to choose, where John Cena beat. Triple H and Ric Flair, like yeah. she will be a legend in Oscar. In Oscar, and it, you I, know, I, see, I agree with you. And I think Oscar can give her one of her best matches. Like I'm glad it was Oscar because Oscar's no slouch, and especially mm-hmm. with this dark uh, Kano clown thing she got going on, this yep. will be perfect. Because honestly, I couldn't see if if Alexa Bliss couldn't manage with Bianca, how can Liv Morgan in terms of size? You got Mella, who mm-hmm. Mella shocked me in the Elimination Chamber. I liked her, but Mella's not ready for that that uh, WrestleMania spot. I think Rodri- um, Rodriguez, uh, Raquel, mm-hmm. will be a star, but to that point, I don't think she was ready, and I think Oscar was the perfect person to choose to battle Bianca. Yeah. So uh, the spots in that that women's elimination like uh, women's elimination chamber was great. Now the weakest match in my opinion was Bobby and Brock. Really? Yeah, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot, Brian. I loved it. Like, cause I, I'm a big Bobby guy, but mm-hmm. I just don't like that it went out with Brock hitting him in the groin. I knew it had to be a DQ, and it just felt it felt rushed. And I and I would prefer Bobby versus Brock again at WrestleMania and end it. Instead of whatever Bray Wyatt is gonna do, it's not meant to end yet. Okay, it's okay, not meant to end yet. That's do so you that's think all. this they gonna just do a detour for WrestleMania and then bring it back whenever it's time? Oh uh, yeah, not because you remember Bray Wyatt said he I, wanted the winner. I think that's a uh, yeah. yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we could get a triple threat match. Uh, okay, you know, but I just think. Uh, not over yet. Okay. You know? And that's the thing about Brock and Bobby. And See, you me, making me feel better about it. Cause like, yeah. I was like, there's no way it can be over at like that. We, we, we just got to pay attention. Gotcha. Just when they change the question, the answers, they, we, we think we got the answers. They change the question. That's a fact. And, and so with that, how did you feel about, let's get to it. Sammy and Roman. I think this was one of Roman's best matches. I mm-hmm. think Sammy did an incredible job as the hometown hero. I think this Montreal crowd with that match will go down as one of the, it'll go in, into the legendary books of like the screw job, how that crowd was crazy. It'll go into like some of the takeovers in Brooklyn with uh, Sasha and uh, Bailey. It'll go with CM Punk, Money the Bank, Chicago, in terms of like just great crowds. How did you feel about this match? Were you satisfied with the ending? The only thing I would have preferred, and and see, this goes to my final thing that I'm going to get to after we get this of, I would have wanted Jay to chair slam Sammy, but I get it because Jay is the linchpin to break up the bloodline. So I wasn't Mm. thinking that far into it. And I might as well say it now. I think no matter what happens at WrestleMania, I do think Cody will win. But I think at SummerSlam, we see the end of the bloodline with Jay versus Roman and Jay gets his come up and beats Roman and then Roman goes on vacation for a little bit. Mm, I think Jay should be the one to dethrone him. Oh, so you think he should. Okay. So you think Cody getting that L (laughs) I think, see, I think Cody's going to win. I don't want Cody to win, but I think because you want to tell this great story, but how do you feel? I got, I got one something for you for the J thing. Uh Two out of three falls, WrestleMania, the match with Cody. Each fall is a belt. So Ooh. let's say Co- two out of three falls, Cody 
gets the WWE belt with his fall. And then Roman gets the other one. And, and you can have it where Roman ends the match as the winner. So he keeps his universal for the thousand days. That way, Cody accomplished it. Raw gets a champion. Cody looks strong. And then Roman looks strong because Roman still got the universal. And you can have it where Jimmy comes out and interferes. That way, Roman gets the final pin or, or gets the, the second pin for the universal. It's difficult because if you, if Cody's gonna win, he's got to get the flowers and the yeah and the Stark the the Fetty, you know. So I don't know, man. I think it, I would have loved for them to have said, okay, we're gonna have the champion defend on both nights. See, um, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Yeah, it's 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 weird. We got to see it play out. But overall, man, I look at it like I thought the match was great. I thought it was great storytelling from the moment Roman walked out there. He was walking into and what a what territory. a good man to let Sammy come out second. Like that just goes to show about Roman understanding the moment. Yeah, I mean it could have went either way too because he could have came out there like Cena. I mean uh, CM Punk in Chicago and ran around the ring for a while. So, mm -hmm. but I, I think yeah, it was good they came out and you know of course championship entrance was you know shout out to Samantha Irvin. Uh, but overall it's. You know, and, and you know, like I said, even the psychology, you know, is is it's not too many crazy spots, yep. headlocks, takedowns. It was wrestling, but it was also getting you involved. And he made you hate him even more. Yes, he because did. That's the thing. Roman was getting real cool. Yeah, he was, he was getting real cool doing this. People, run. everybody was doing the thing, the ones, and the see, you could, you ones. still know how cool he was because when he did the whoosa and when he did yeah. his normal, people still did it with him, and I was like, whoa. Y'all really do love Roman like that. Yeah, but I'm saying at one point, remember he was getting cheered, even no facts. He was facts. But now, you know, I knew when he whatever he did, what he was gonna do to Sammy, it was gonna get ugly. And sure mm. enough, it did. Yep. So now I'm interested to see, you know, the ending. Sammy said the people didn't get what they want, and it could have been a you know a different climax. And they're I going for the Kevin Owens Sammy versus the Usos. And, and, and that's to me, that's kind of a letdown because I don't think. You would do all this for the tag team, man. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and I also look at it like Sammy, as good as he is, it's I don't know, man. It's just it's so much, and I just feel like he, as good as he is, and I go back to his Ariel Hawani interview, and I said this on on Instagram, I said it on my pod. I just feel like he knows WWE knows he can't be the the, the what Roman does. He can't do what Cena does in terms mm -hmm. of being the face. The, when I saw Cody Rhodes on Hot 97 on the Black People Radio Station, and I know that's Rosenberg, but still, for people to... I, I read the comments of when I watch interviews of these wrestlers, see how the fans feel. Mm -hmm. The brothers love Cody Rhodes. White people love Cody Rhodes. Everybody loves him to where it's like, okay, he can actually be the Cody face. The king. That, exactly. He can be the <laughs> face that WWE hasn't had in a while. And I think that you, it, as great as Sammy is, that you just can't put the belt on him. You could, I think you, you in a transitional way, same way you did Foley. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I don't think he can be, it's, you know, I, and I even not even go into that, right? You know, I think what he was basically saying is it should have been like a stronger finish. Like if he was gonna get beat, really get beat and send the people home crying, you know what I mean? Or even it, it just, it, the ending felt weird. I just felt like it should have been like he should have been beat down and beat into oblivion. Um, but, you know, and like I said, the Jay Uso of it all, I love the fact that he came out there. He didn't make a decision. Jay Uso has been like, you know, he deserves all the Emmy. Yes, awards he does. Because he sucked up the crowd and, you know, him. he took the spear. Mm -hmm. and you can see like he's still hurt. Yeah, he is. You, yep. you know, he's still hurt. He's still torn. Yeah, oh, man. It's it's interesting. No, 100 percent. Thank you so much, Brian, for coming on the show. Like I said, we're going to bring you back very soon on the road mm -hmm. to WrestleMania because there's a much more we got to talk about. And we got to talk about how AEW storytelling been lacking. But that's okay. going to be for another <laughs> conversation because I've been so upset. We talked about how MJF dropping the ball. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that. <laughs> Tell them where they can find you at on social media. My little pup came in the room. My little Sheila girl. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can find me everywhere at Brian H. Waters, W-A-T-E-R-S. Appreciate y'all listening. Appreciate y'all follows. Interact with me. I talk wrestling. I, I actually, I engage with people who engage with me. So I read Facts. my comments. I read my notifications. Uh, I actually stop my notifications from coming to the phone as soon as they come. It's like a little peaceful, but <laughs> yeah. um, I, I still read them. You so. respond to everybody. No, that's yeah, how me and you got the link besides with Norm. So Yeah, shout out to Norm, man. Yeah, you know. man. Shout out to our brother, man. 100%. Exactly. Thank uh, you, Brian, yeah. so much. Absolutely. Oh, go ahead. 
I was gonna say, make sure you, uh, every Wednesday catch me all day. Um, you know, uh, after this drops, if y'all listen to radio, check out Wednesday Worldwide yes, on sir. the Ringer uh, Network feed. Then check me out tonight on TWG Fan Club at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. I mean, uh, Central Time on uh, those Wrestling Girls Twitch channel. And then tonight at 10.30 Eastern Time, 9.30 Central Time. Check out the Wrestling Realm Now podcast with myself, Brother Hugh, the real Dwayne Allen. Yes, so, sir. Yeah, gotta like the gotta there. like the midnight oil. Y'all make yeah. sure y'all check <laughs> Brian out for his incredible wrestling Wednesdays. Thank you so much, Brian. And until next time, you know, enjoy yourself and have a good one, brother. Appreciate you, bro.